Myasthenia gravis, finding strength one day at a time. This video series is brought to you by Contra Myasthenia gravis, who's been serving MG patients since 1972. In today's broadcast, host Sarah Bolton, resilience coach and rare disease advocate, talks with Amy Zayner. Please keep in mind, each person's experience with MG is unique. The information in this video reflects one person's story. It is not intended to be a substitute for professional medical advice. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Myasthenia Gravis, Finding Strength One Day at a Time. I am Sarah Bolton, your host, and I am super excited to be here with Amy Zayner today. And Amy's going to share with us a little bit about her story and how she has learned to become empowered with living with her various health challenges. So Amy, welcome to the show. So glad you can join us today. Thank you so much for having me. Um, uh, it's a real pleasure to be here. I have been living with myasthenia gravis probably my whole life, um, but I got diagnosed um, a few years ago and um, it took me about seven years to get my diagnosis because um, my antibodies took time to show up. And same with uh, getting testing done. Um, I just uh, seem to be out of luck with getting providers that uh, would find the MG that was like there kind of hiding in plain sight. Um, and um, it was really challenging for me to go through um, getting my diagnosis. Um, I really had to advocate for myself uh, full-heartedly on a continuum uh, year after year, trying to find the right provider that would um, just take it a step further and trying to figure me out. Like I knew there was something wrong with me and um, the symptoms were there, but I just didn't exactly fit the class, uh, classic textbook version for a long time. So, um, you know, there were some challenges in getting my diagnostic journey to into the right hands of the right neuromuscular specialist who could help me. It took time um, to get there. It, getting my diagnosis of myasthenia gravis was um, a relief, a gigantic relief, a burden lifted off my shoulders because during those seven years when I was trying to get diagnosed where I had all of these different symptoms, you know, fluctuating, coming and going, um, I had a very hard time getting providers to believe me, to, to um, you know, see the uh, symptoms, uh, the clinical symptoms in action and my blood work the, for the test that they did, it wasn't showing up. And so, um, you know, there were also experiences of some gaslighting and uh, doctors that dismissed me or told me it was in my head. And that really kind of, you know, messed with me mentally, emotionally. It was really tough to stay strong, but I just, I knew in my intuition, in my gut, that something was wrong with me and that some of the mislabels or misdiagnoses that I received in place of what should have been the MG diagnosis, it just didn't fit. It didn't feel right. I just kind of knew in my gut for me that like, it didn't make sense. And so I kept, I kept at it every, you know, year, every couple of years trying to get that diagnosis. Um, and not that I wanted to specifically have MG, like, I don't think anybody would want to have MG, but I just, um, I knew that, that something was amiss and I kept at it. And so when I I finally had the blood test that revealed I had LRP4 antibodies. So one of the rare antibodies uh, associated with MG. And when I had a provider that did my single fiber EMG electromyography study, and um, all of a sudden he found um, content or, you know, things they were looking for that really showed oh, she has neuromuscular disease going on for sure in the neuromuscular junction. And the LRP4 antibody was um, that result, that test result was the thing 
the definitive piece of tangible evidence that my doctor needed to diagnose me. And so once he had that, it all came together. I know that you live with my senior gravis and it is one of many health challenges that you have experienced. How do you keep a, such a positive attitude despite all of the circumstances? That's a great question. Thank you, Sarah. Um, well, I have been through a lot of different challenges in life and put through some really tough times. And so as I overcame each of these different events in my life and the health issues started to mount and, and collect <laughs> my collection of autoimmune illness and, and different conditions, um, kind of just one on top of the other over the years, I built up this uh, resiliency. I built up this ability to bounce back because I kind of have within me this innate desire to keep on going like there, there's this hopefulness within me that just refuses to to die refuses to give up perspective is everything and when we are people that have challenges especially chronic illnesses like myasthenia gravis which is grave it is serious uh myasthenia gravis itself i had it to such a severe degree that I was considered refractory a year ago. The fact that I've almost died the number of times that I have, I mean, we're talking like literal life-changing, facing death, face-to-face -face in the moment uh, experiences that gave me a perspective and such an appreciation for our life while we're in it, in the moment, staying present is so utterly important and having appreciation for all of all, all that life has to offer. Quite honestly, I have a choice. Uh, I consider it a choice of lifestyle and my lifestyle is gratitude. Every day living in gratitude for simple things, for big things, for being here, just for waking up to another day for having cute little twinkly lights in my background, for having a fan that can put a breeze on my face or for opening my door and seeing some nature, hearing some birds or enjoying my cityscape and you know, getting into my city and all the grittiness that it has to offer. It's, it's perspective. One, a person can be suffering. You can have pain in your body that is really frustrating. You could have different ailments that make you feel sick all the time, or you can have MG, mycenia, and feel weak, you know, or wanting to do basic tasks like brush your hair, brush your teeth, go for a walk. And some of us with MG struggle with those basic things. So others, you know, may have a different experience and they can do more physically, but there's many ways that MG affects us. And that can really take a toll mentally, emotionally, spiritually, like every aspect of you gets uh, tried by MG and other autoimmune illnesses, other illnesses, chronic illness. And so like for me, I think in, in reflecting, thinking about things like meditation or mindfulness or prayer, whatever you know one is, is akin to, I think that can be really helpful in centering oneself and thinking about like the, the chaos that's going around us. I think of it as the eye and the hurricane, right? So the eye is calm. That one spot in the middle of the hurricane, the hurricane is the storm moving around and around, but in the middle is calm. And so I think of it like, well, it could be that my external environment is chaotic, but inside is calm. Or I could think of it also like I am the eye of the hurricane and my body with all the disease and all the, the suffering, the ailments is moving on around me. But in my mind, in my heart, when I take a breath, I'm actually calm in those thoughts, in, in that way of being, I'm not my suffering. My suffering isn't all that I'm about. Um, and even when it seems consuming, like because there's so much pain or there's so much weakness or so many different ailments from my illnesses, 
that can feel consuming. It can feel like, oh my gosh, that's, that's everything. And that's all I'm about. And that's all my life is, or going to appointments is all my life is, but there's always more. Amy, sure. as somebody who has received a diagnosis now, what advice would you give to somebody who is new to living with MG? Maybe they've just been diagnosed or it's all new to them. Sure. So I, I very well remember being in that, that strange space of like, oh, I've got a diagnosis, but oh, what does it mean? <laughs> like, now what? Now what do I do? Uh, I think I have questions. So I think one of the first things would be to start writing down those questions. Start thinking about like, well, what would you like to know more about? Uh, maybe even make a list of the things that you think you know about MG. Um, as a starting point. And then I would say um, it's research time and like not to be afraid of, you know, getting into learning about MG. I think um, educating yourself is key. And, and there's a lot of information out there. There are specific resources um, that I think us within the MG community would refer you to uh, that are super helpful. There's a lot of um, a lot of information. Um, and, you know, there, there are specific organizations that have a real abundance of information available for MG patients. So um, I would definitely like turn you in that direction to provide resources. Um, I would also encourage join support groups. There are friendships to be had and a lot to learn from others who have MG um, because we have tricks of the trade things that can help, even if it's, if it's not to do with treatment itself, but ways that we manage our symptoms, ways that help us. There's a huge online community. There are tons of support groups online through like social media, Facebook, there's folks on Instagram to follow, um, you know, and pick and choose of like what connects, what resonates with you. Thank you so much, Amy. It has been such a pleasure having this conversation with you. I simply adore you and Aww. am so inspired by <laughs> the work that you're doing in the world. Um, thank you for being with us. Thank you so much, Sarah. You are just, you are the best. To learn more about Myasthenia Gravis, to make a donation, or to support the work of Conquer MG, please visit us at www.myastheniagravis.org. Thank you.